If you've had an M4 Mac Mini sitting in your basket at apple.com for the last week, but haven't hit buy yet, you're not quite sure if you've made the right choices. This is going to be a last minute buyer's guide telling you all the choices I think you should make to buy the perfect M4 Mac Mini. They start to drop tomorrow. We haven't got much time, so I'm going to get straight into it. If this is the first of my videos you've seen, my name's David and I make videos about Apple gear every week. Why? Well, because as you can see, I'm surrounded by Apple gear and I love sitting, chatting to you about it. As you know, Apple jumped straight from M2 to M4 with Mac Mini. There was never an M3, which means we're going to see some massive improvements when we start to get our hands on these Mac Minis. But if you're anything like me, then you'll find at checkout, you tick too many boxes. And with Apple, when you start ticking too many boxes, the costs went up really, really quickly. So in this video, we're going to go through all of the different specifications. We're going to keep it nice and simple and help you build what I consider to be the perfect Mac Mini. We're going to get to the sweet spot. And also, I've got a couple of unanswered questions towards the end and something I need your help with as well. But first of all, let's get going with the specs on your Mac Mini and let's start with storage. First of all, avoid that base Mac Mini at £599. It looks great for Apple. It's a great ticket price to have on their website, but it's cheap for a reason. It's only got 256 gigs of storage on, which is really inadequate. Spend £200 more and go for at least 512 gigs of storage. As to how much storage you need, let history be your teacher. Go and look at your previous Mac. That's exactly what I did. I looked at my M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is three years old and has been used heavily for three years. And in that time, I've only used 764 gigs of storage. And bearing in mind, sitting on my desktop at the moment is a folder with 300 gigs in it, which is a video that I'm about to upload to the channel over the next couple of days. Yes, I shoot in ProRes. It's a big file. But that means, basically, I've only used about 400 to 450 gigs of storage over three years. Everything is cloud storage now. And as soon as I finish with big projects, probably like yourself, I archive them and get them off the Mac anyway. Now, a lot was said last week about the Thunderbolt 5 ports, and it is a good improvement, don't get me wrong, but the speeds that Apple quoted of 120 gigabits per second, as it turns out, relate to displays, not to data. Data is going to be limited to about 80 gigs per second, which is still fast, but you will need to have Thunderbolt 5 cables, which aren't cheap, and you will need to find yourself a Thunderbolt 5 SSD, and there's not many of those out there, and SSDs do have a tendency to overheat. I always prefer internal storage. It's one less thing to have hanging out the back of the Mac, even though this is predominantly going to be a desktop Mac, it's just neater and it's one less thing to worry about. So if you can afford internal storage, always buy as much as you need. One other small improvement I would suggest you make, and one that I've done myself on my Mac mini order, which I'll be talking about in a moment, is I've stepped it up to the 10 gigabit ethernet connection. I just think again, it could be something that comes in useful down, down the line. If I decide to go for Synology, or if I decide to get a server here in the studio, I know I've got the, the right ports for that. And you may well live in an area that's got fast, really fast fiber. And if you have that 10 gig ethernet connection, you know you can utilize all of that speed. So rounding out in storage, I would suggest the sweet spot is somewhere between 512 gigs of SSD and one terabyte. For most of us, that will do. Next, we need to look at unified memory. Reading the comments over the last couple of days, a lot of you are coming from Intel machines, this Mac Mini. This Mac Mini has really caused a hell of a lot of interest. And if you're coming from an Intel to an Apple Silicon Mac, an M4 Apple Silicon Mac, the figures don't correlate. Don't worry about these seemingly low numbers on the unified memory. For most people, 16 gigs of unified memory will be fine. My M3 MacBook Air has got 16 gigs on, and that hasn't complained in all of the last seven, eight months that I've been using it. It's a great machine. So for General use, 16 gigs, and of course, 16 gigs is now the base across all Macs, will be fine. Of course, if you've got a little bit of extra budget, 24 gigs is fine, but I wouldn't say most people would need anything more than 24 gigs of memory. And if you do, you'll know the kind of person that you are, you know the kind of workflow that you're doing. Just make sure you make the right choice now, of course, because you can't go back with storage, at least you can put some additional storage onto it. But with RAM, with these kind of chips, you cannot upgrade that at all. So just make sure that you've got no bars remorse and get enough RAM to see through the kind of work that you do. Sweet spots again, I would say 16, 24 gigs. We are saving money and building the perfect Mac Mini. If this is one of the first videos of mine you've seen, I hope you're enjoying. If you are, go and hit subscribe. I was looking at the data on the channel and about 90% of people who watch these videos and are enjoying these videos aren't subscribing. It's a tiny little thing to do. Once it's done, you can forget about it. While you're there, Turn on notifications as well, because there's going to be loads of content coming out about the M4 Mac Mini, and I want to make sure that you get to see it all. Next, let's talk about the M4 Pro and who that is for. It really isn't for very many people at all. It's the one that I've chosen 
because of the channel here, of course, and also because of the work that I do. Most of my work is in Photoshop, Lightroom, InDesign, Adobe Audition, and also obviously I'm making videos and Final Cut Pro. So I use quite heavy tasks. So I've gone for the M4 Pro. The actual config I've gone for is the 14 core CPU, 20 core GPU, 10 gigabit Ethernet connection. It's got 48 gigs of memory on there and one terabyte of SSD storage. The prices for the M4 Mac Mini Pro start at £1,399. Mine ended up costing me £2,199. It's not for everyone but I can see that I'm going to be using this machine really, really hard and pretty quickly as well. Now, once you start getting into that territory of £2,000, there's a lot of people have been talking about the Mac Studio. They're very different beasts. It's much bigger for starters. That might be a consideration. This Mac Mini is going to sit on anybody's desk. It's so small, look, five by five by two inches deep, I believe. And the Studio isn't for everybody. It's still got the M2 Max in it, but it only comes at that. The base configuration comes with only 512 gigs of storage. And so going back to an earlier point, if you're the kind of person that's a pro user that needs an M2 studio, that's not going to be enough. And as soon as you begin adding storage on, then the price begins to ramp up as well. And keep, I keep coming back to the point that is still an M2 chip. It's the M2 architecture. It's older architecture. I'm setting a lot of store by the fact that this M4 chip is going to blow us all away. I mean, for instance, I'm not a Geekbench person, but I was reading some tests and the tests have been shown that the M4 base is as fast as the M3 Pro chip, which had a 12 core CPU and an 18 core GPU. So I think for most of us, going for the newer chip and the Mac Mini makes more sense than buying the Mac Studio. But if you really feel you want a Mac Studio, don't forget there's a very good chance a new one is coming out next year. So it may be worth just waiting on for a little bit. There's a few things that we don't know the answers to yet until we get our hands on these new M4 Mac Minis. For instance, thermals. None of us had a chance yet to really see how these M4 chips work every day. It's got active cooling and it looks like there is plenty of cooling coming out the bottom of the Mac Mini, but none of us have had a chance to really test it. Fingers crossed it works well, but we don't know just yet. The power button, that seems to become a huge thing over the past few days. I don't see why. It's only reaching around the back, in the back corner to turn it off. It's not the end of the world. You don't barely have to lift the machine up. And if you do, it's tiny. But anyway, who's turning their Macs off? Every, I rarely turn my Macs off, I don't know about you. So I don't see the power button is a thing at all. And lastly, the one disappointment is there was no SD card slot on it. I would have loved there to have been an SD card slot on the front of the Mac Mini. It would have made my life certainly a lot easier. As it is, I'm going to have to use my Avanki dock or possibly buy another dongle with an SD card reader on it. That is one of the only drawbacks that I've currently got about the specifications that you can make. It would be a nice upgrade if you could have chosen to have an SD card slot built into it, which you can't. So those are the things that we kind of don't know about at the moment. So let's look now at that sweet spot Mac that I was talking about. The perfect Mac Mini that's also going to save you a huge chunk of money. Don't go for the M4 Pro. Most people will be fine with the M4 chip. 24 gigs of memory, one terabyte of storage, a 10 gig Ethernet connection, and you have got a fantastic Mac Mini, all four. £1,299, which is almost, almost a bargain. And it's a Mac that's going to last you for years. I reckon that is the perfect Mac for the majority of people to buy. You may remember at the beginning, I mentioned that I needed your help with something. A crazy idea has come into my mind. As I mentioned, I think earlier on, my Mac Mini isn't going to be ready until late November, early December. So I've got a couple of weeks to wait. Would it interest you if I went and bought a Mac Mini off the shelf over the weekend, to begin looking at and reviewing here on the channel next week. And if I did, what sort of things should I be doing on it? Bearing in mind the kind of work I do here, audio and video work, Photoshop work. Do you think that's a crazy idea or would it interest you? I haven't seen or felt so much excitement about a new Mac in ages. This Mac mini has caught everybody's imagination. I really hope this video has helped you just focus in on where you should be looking to spend your money and perhaps what the best configs for you might be. I mentioned about that Mac Mini of mine, by the way. If you want to know why I chose the specifications I chose and why I ended up spending £2,200, there's a video on screen now that will explain it all.